Mankind has been harnessing wind to do useful work for centuries. Over 2,000 years ago, Chinese and Persian engineers independently developed the first windmills to pump water for irrigating crops. Windmills first appeared in Europe during medieval times, where they were used for agricultural and industrial purposes. This windmill is an example of a classic Dutch-style windmill built in the 1800s. The blades were once covered with canvas to catch the wind. Although these early windmills were not very efficient by today's standards, the ways in which they increased production at the time made them a useful tool. Modern, electricity-generating wind turbines first appeared in the late 1800s. However, it wasn't until the energy crisis of the 1970s when the focus shifted to the large-scale development of wind power. By the late 1990s, large wind farms started to appear, and wind-generated electricity became commercially available. Modern wind turbines consist of three parts, rotor blades, nacelle, and tower. Most wind turbines have three rotor blades that can be up to 100 feet long. The blades convert wind energy into mechanical energy. Wind turbine blades look much like an airplane wing. They're curved on the top and flat on the bottom. The air flowing over the top of the blade has to take a slightly longer path and therefore move faster in order to keep up with the air flowing under the blade. Bernoulli's principle dictates that this difference in airspeed will create a pressure difference to develop across the blade. This pressure difference is the origin of the lifting force that allows for the blades of the turbine to rotate. The nacelle houses the inner workings of the wind turbine that are responsible for electrical power generation. All three rotor blades are attached at the hub. The hub slowly turns a shaft connected to the gearbox, which turns a faster shaft in order to power the electrical generator. Electrical power is then distributed to customers via the electrical grid. The average utility scale wind turbine has a 2 megawatt capacity, which is enough to power about 500 average sized homes. The tower supports the structure of the wind turbine and lifts the rotor blades high above the ground into stronger, more continuous winds. Towers can be 250 feet tall. In this experiment, we'll use a scale model of a wind turbine to generate electricity. This particular model is 2.5 feet tall with one foot long blades. This is about a hundred times smaller than the average utility sized turbine. However, it has all the same parts. The tower, the nacelle, and the rotor blades. Right now, wind energy is being transformed to electrical energy by the wind turbine. The voltmeter is measuring how much electricity is being produced by the turbine. The turbine is producing about 0.8 volts, which is enough electricity to light a small LED. What changes could we make to produce more electricity? Pause this video and brainstorm some changes. Some ways to increase the turbine output include faster wind, changing the blade angle, using longer blades, and having a larger generator. Wind power has its supporters and its opposition. Let's take some time to consider the pros and cons of wind power. Some advantages of wind power include wind turbines use the wind, a natural and renewable source of energy to generate electricity. Fossil fuels are required to produce and construct wind turbines, but they're no longer a factor once the turbine is up and running. Most wind power costs are associated with turbine installation. Wind turbines can be constructed almost anywhere there are consistent and favorable winds. Some disadvantages of wind power include Presently, wind power infrastructure is only capable of supplementing other non-renewable technologies. Studies suggest that the noise and light flicker from wind turbines may cause illness in people who live close by. Some environmentalists believe that large wind farms can impact the behavior of local wildlife. Construction of wind turbines does not affect all local residents equally. Some may obstruct views and decrease property values. Do the global benefits of wind power outweigh the local downsides? This is a question for all of us to discuss as we face the uncertain future of our environment and energy needs. <laughs>